Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and in this video I'm pumped because we're gonna go ahead and control AC lights, that's you know these lights that you plug in with regular power, these are some icicles, and we're gonna control them with an LOR controller but we're gonna use X lights. So this is a great tutorial whether you're using X lights, Vixen, or any other software and you want to be able to control AC lights. I know a lot of people I've talked to have an LOR controller, a Lighterama, or maybe you've bought one used like I do. I just went out to eBay, I bought one of these. It's a 16 channel LOR controller, and now in this video, we're gonna figure out how to make the thing work. Now, the very first thing that I did was I needed to go out and buy the Lightorama USB 485. I discovered that basically what we need to do is, although the connection port to uh, configure the Lightorama controller, which is going to be our first step here, although that happens through a uh, Ethernet port, it's actually using RS-485 or DMX type signal, okay? And so that's how we're ultimately going to connect our Lightorama controller to our shell. Now, we may be able to use a Falcon controller or any other controller that has an RS-485 output or DMX output. And a lot of these controllers actually have them wired as an Ethernet jack. And so we don't, so once we've got this thing configured, we don't really need this Lightorama piece of hardware, but until then we do. Luckily, these are very inexpensive. So the steps to get this thing to work are first and foremost, I've got to go ahead and configure this controller. I bought it used, so it may already have some kind of configuration on it, but I want to verify it. Then I've got to get out my main Falcon controller, which I'm going to use to connect this to, and I've got to enable the port on there to get output. Last but not least, we've got to go ahead, test everything, and make sure it works. What could possibly go wrong? All right, so doing a little more research, I discovered that I bought a CTB16D, a 16-channel Lightorama controller board, and when I went to this page about setting the unit ID, um, setting the controller unit ID from Lightorama, it says that actually, um, with this blue controller, as long as I have uh, the latest firmware or above version, above version 4.2, then I can actually just um, assign DMX without even having the RS-485 box. And I can do that by looking at the unit. I've got these two rotary switches, and if I just set them to 0, 1, it's going to set that to DMX address 1. Now, um, because this is a video and I'm sharing this with you and I want you to be able to learn, I'm going to go ahead and go plug in the RS-485 adapter and make sure that I'm on the latest version of the firmware, or at least version 4.2. So to do that, I've got to go ahead and I've got to plug in uh, the unit and use the Showtime sequencing suite from Lightorama. So I'm going to download and install this. I'm going to plug in my unit, and then I'll be right back and uh, we'll go find the, the controller, see if it's got the right firmware, and then go from there. Alright, so now I've launched Lightorama, I've plugged in their USB box, I've plugged that in with a small network cable to my Lightorama box, um, either port works on the Lightorama box. And now, I'm going to go, I guess, start demo edition. I'm in the manual for my, my, my Lightorama box here, and it says, uh, install the Showtime PC software, just did that, um, install the adapter, did that, wired up the, the unit, set the unit ID, I did that. Um, plug the cable in. All right, so now I can actually turn on my unit, actually plug that in. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I've plugged it in. The uh, red light on the unit is blinking, which is good. And so now we're going to start the light Orama control panel. Maybe hardware? Well, let me go to my my recently. Okay, there we go. This is one of those things that drives me crazy about Lightorama is there's like a billion different programs and they're not all in one. So, 
answer okay to any boxes. There will be a light blue light bulb. Right click the light bulb and select hardware utility. And then you'll see this window, ta-da. Then it says, click the auto configure in the upper left-hand corner. Well, it didn't like that. <laughs> oh, maybe it did, okay. It's just doing it now. Controller has been located on COM4. Is that the port that'll be used for shows? Sure. Obviously, I'm not actually using Lightorama for my shows. And so now it says, okay, our unit ID, let's see. So now I can select the unit. Oops. Well, we'll wait for that a minute. Um, oh, I was supposed to press, okay, I did press refresh, great. So now it's searching my network. And now it says, okay, plug some lights in. So while it's searching for the network here, I'm gonna pause, get my lights plugged into the controller, and I'll be right back to check on it. All right, all right, so we finished it. We found one unit. It's version 4.32 is the version of the software on it, which means that in one of these it said that if it was version, it said something about I think if it was version 4.2 or higher, it'd be good, so I'm not going to touch it because I'm sure it's going to be fine at 4.32. Um, and so now that I've got that going, we can go ahead while we're here at least and... Um, I would not set the unit ID here. You can probably, I don't know if it will work or not because this unit has the, the knobs to select the unit ID, but I would not set it here whether it works or not because I would be worried about disabling those knobs. I don't know if that happens or not. So let's test all the units, all the uh, 16 channels with a chase on, let's see. And hey, it works, awesome. So I just plugged in my one strand of lights to channel 14, clearly it is working. It lights up at the correct time, and life is great. And so maybe I go all right here, and I turn that off, and then there's on, there's shimmer, there's twinkle, which is really just ways that they flicker. Um, so I see. There's twinkling, but that's not going to work. I have LED lights. They're not going to dim. So, hey, this thing works. Awesome. So now I'm going to close this out and get ready to hook up my Falcon. So... What I'm going to do to hook up my Falcon is I'm going to plug in my Falcon into power uh, and put it on my network. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug a cable from the Falcon's DMX output, an Ethernet cable, uh, into the Lightorama controller. And then with both of those powered on, I should then be able to configure the Falcon to uh, be getting that data to the Lightorama controller. All right, so I've got all that stuff powered up, and I've got my Falcon talking to the computer, and so that's good. It's on my network, and I can reach its its page uh, here. So now I'm looking at the F48 manual. Now I've got three DMX ports. One's called DMX1 slash receiver. One's called DMX2. One's called DMX3. And then there's DMX pinout jumpers, which are labeled as DMX and LOR. So my best guess is that I need to go ahead and take these tiny little jumpers that are on basically the center pin in, in DMX on the right and move those to be on the, the other side where it's LOR and DMX. But let us check the manual first because ultimately you don't want to do the wrong thing. So scrolling down, bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. go ahead and go we'll just search LOR. Say da -da 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 -da, DMX protocol LOR. Do not connect LOR devices to DMX1. Awesome. Good, good, good. So I didn't do that. Um, use DMX2 or 3. And so then it says uh, serial pinout jumpers. LOR and standard DMX pinouts are supported. Select the correct pinout or else you have to use a crossover cable. Okay, great. So we're going to go, yep, we're going to put it on the LOR side. So we're going to set up the pinout like that. And then what I'm going to do, once I do that, I'll shut off the controller to do that just out of safety. We'll then go to output settings and serial outputs on our controller. And whether you're using a Falcon or some other controller, um, you're just going to look for its output settings for its serial or DMX outputs. Then we're in port number two. So serial data, type, DMX, start address. Let's go ahead and put that at start address one. 
And then I say I'm going to have to move this one to 513. And then save it. Well, that didn't go right. Let's try this again. Well, it sure doesn't like that. See, this is the, the fun of figuring this out. So let's consult the manual again. All right, so this is where we see the difference between if we're using Xlight's channels versus Universe and Start addresses. Now, I find it a lot easier to stay organized with Universe and Start addresses, but that probably has to do with my background in stage lighting. So I'm just going to do that here, Universe and Start channel, and then save. And then I can go, this is the string ports page, and then I can go to the serial outputs page. And now we get universe and addresses, which is great. And so maybe, just maybe, it will let me do this. Nope. Okay, so it was turned red, but it will let me do that. So it's allowing me to put this on universe one start address one, which is lovely and wonderful. And so now I can go ahead, I'm going to open up X-Lights here to do a test. So I need to make sure, first of all, that... Um, actually, I guess I'll put it on Universe something else, because this starts at Universe 9. So let's just go ahead and make it Universe 9, start address 1. And then it lets me set that. Wonderful. And go to Universe 9. At which point, I'm going to go ahead and go to universe 9 here and in xlights i'm actually just going to go ahead and select a new show folder just for fun so i'm going to go to xlights just to create a, a totally new show so we're literally just going to go to a new folder and then i'm going to add ethernet E1.31, because that's the protocol I'm using. We're going to send it to 192.168.0.202, I believe. Double check our Falcon there. Yep, 202. We'll go ahead and make the start universe 9. Just do one universe for right now, just to test this thing. And then we can save. At which point, I can go to my layout. I can go ahead and add a new prop. So we're just going to go over here. It's literally just going to be a single line. One string and it's going to be if we go down here to string properties. We're going to set our type to single color intensity that color being not black, but white. Awesome. And then uh, leave everything else alone. And then I'm going to do number of lights per string as 16. So basically it's just going to visualize this as one string with 16 lights on it. And then I can go to my sequence, just make an animation. This is the quick guide. If you haven't used X lights before, then um, follow my guide here. I'll link to it. We'll turn on output to lights. And then I want to go ahead and bring in an effect, such as on. Turn that on. And then I just have to go, the one thing I haven't done yet is uh, this is on. It should be activating my lights right now. But I do have to set that jumper on my uh, Falcon to go to LOR mode. So let me do that real quick. All right, so my lights are not on as they should be, so we're going to start to troubleshoot. And so I went ahead and uh, saw here that my start channel and end channel were 1, so I switched this to number of strings 16, lights per string 1. That seemed to clean that up, saved that, checked to make sure I was sending the right universe to the right place, looked good. Went over here to status on the Falcon. I see that I'm getting information coming through to that universe 9. So that's a good sign. And so now let's go to test. In test mode, I'm going to enable white. Make sure that serial 2 is activated. And it is. And lo and behold, I get nothing. So this now tells me basically either my output setup is wrong or something's not right on the setup of my LOR controller. So I'm going to go troubleshoot 
maybe uh, try changing that address, that ID on the um, controller. See if that does anything. Double check and make sure the serial output um, is making sense, but it sure looks right here. And then I'll report back with any findings. All right, now we say, okay, who's really the smart guy here? Um, because I'm able to make these now work in test mode. What went wrong was that the LOR controller box actually had these tiny little arrows on those switches that I was setting for the DMX address or controller ID. And I wanted those to be one, and the little arrow was faded on one of them, and I didn't have it in the right place. So verify that. Now, test mode is working. And so what this tells me is that, and I'll actually go and disable and just enable serial two. This tells me that, okay, this is interesting, that my output is coming on serial four now and not serial two, which is where I wanted it. So let's troubleshoot. Going to my serial outputs, I'm just gonna show you how I walk through this. It says universe four slash one is what's being sent to that output. And so that doesn't really make any sense to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just check. Maybe I set this to 4.1, save it. Let's see if that works. Nope, still coming up on serial four, which is interesting. So back to the Falcon manual. All right, last step that it took, and this is why I'm the crash test dummy sometimes for the Christmas lighting world, is I just had to go take my controller layout and uh, upload that output to um, to the controller itself. Um, and then it turned green here instead of red, and we were good to go. Um, there's always some funkiness to me with Christmas lighting and how these upload, but I'm thankful that X-Lights works seamlessly with the Falcon controllers, and you can just press upload output, at which point I'm now pressing this on, turning on and off output, or pressing this on. So here, I'll move it. And then, boom, it turns on when I want it. And it is beautiful and lovely. So, so with that, guys, um, thanks for watching. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe here. And if you want more help getting started with Christmas lighting, check out learnchristmaslighting.com. You'll see more info resources there, as well as our new course, which will be coming out to the public soon. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. If you do want to get on the wait list, if it's not open right now, check out learnchristmaslighting.com slash waitlist, and we will see you there. Thanks.